It's now 21 to 5, Jazz Radio 94.1 FM, and one of our great singers, Janet Seidel, will be on her way up to uh, our shores uh, very soon to play at South Tweed Sports Club. Actually, on 11th of July, she'll be appearing with Willie Quar at South Tweed Sports. And uh, Janet's on the line. Janet, a great pleasure to talk to you this afternoon. Great to talk to you. I hope uh, the weather's a little bit nicer up there than it is in Sydney. It's absolutely freezing. Well, I was just saying that, actually. It's pretty cold here, but 15 degrees here. It's the coldest it's been for a while. Right, OK, yes. Probably a lot colder down there. Yes. <laughs> yes, certainly jumpers and thick woolly socks, and I've even seen people with hats. <laughs> oh, really? Which is rare in Sydney, yes. Now, you've been very busy over the last year or so, touring all over the world and uh, Australia. We've been, uh, actually I don't think we've exactly been uh, bio or emissions friendly because I've been on a few a few overseas planes, <laughs> but uh, we've, last year we did a big tour of Taiwan and um, went to Northern Ireland and UK, and this year we were lucky enough to get a tour of Japan right in the middle of cherry blossom time, which was for, a first for me, so that was just enchanting, but most of our tours for the rest of the year and halfway through next year are going to take us all around Australia and uh, use an environmentally friendly uh, diesel car to get us around. Well, you'll be up to South Tweed Sports uh, on 11th of July and also heading up to Brisbane and Noosa as well. Yes, it makes sense. If you're going to leave home, you know, it makes sense to actually play a few spots on the way. And uh, it's going to be great fun with our friend Willie because... My wonderful guitarist Chuck Morgan and Willie go back a long way and we certainly, musicians, have known the Choir Brothers for years and Willie was one of the foundation members of Galapagos Duck but also a very good musician and he'll be playing drums and flute and saxophone and doing all those things, not at the same time, but exceptionally well. So uh, it'll be my trio, which appeared at South Tweed last year, uh, augmented by Willie Choir. And we were talking earlier, just off air, about uh, your inspiration uh, from uh, Blossom Deary, one of the, the great singer-songwriters, and you actually met her. I did, and um, I was just really, really pleased. The three of us, David and Chuck and I, had been doing a tour of the UK, and we went over to do a couple of gigs in New York, she said casually. And uh, while we were in New York, we also went out a lot, and... Blossom Deary was at that stage playing in a cabaret room called Danny's Skylight Room and uh, aged 82, hey. <laughs> and we were just so pleased to be in the audience and I presented her with a big bunch of blossoms and she'd, I think she'd been made aware of me by one of my Japanese uh, fans and sort of critics and he'd given Blossom a song that I'd written called Dear Blossom and so she knew who I was, so it was lovely to meet her. But more importantly, the three of us were absolutely captivated by her show with her trio. She was by far the best artist that we heard in two weeks of going around to hear great music in New York, and at the age of 82, and even with a sore throat, she sounded sensational. Yeah, she really was a wonderful performer. And, and I'm very sad. I was really, really sad. I actually shed a tear when I knew that Blossom died, but... I'd also met one of her friends. We did a concert last year in a very wonderful cabaret room in London called Pizza on the Park, and that was the last venue that Blossom played in London. So they asked me to do my show, Dear Blossom, and I met one of her friends, and uh, a piano player, singer, and he had quite a lot to do with Blossom, went over and stayed with her and said she was getting quite frail. But she still loved New York and she still loved going out to hear music and be part of the scene but the interesting thing about Blossom was she was part of the scene back in the 50s and you know she was actually friends with Miles Davis and Gil Evans and they used to go around to her apartment and say you know apparently Tony Bennett if he wanted to record a song they'd say let's go over to Blossom and just see how she performs it so they would often be very influenced by her and by her very minimalist approach to music and jazz and I guess that's the way I feel I'm not a rhythm and blues belter I'm not a big mama you know I, I just like to interpret beautifully written songs and and I, it's really more about the song than it is about me when I perform and I hope 
that's sincerely, sincerely the way I feel about it. And that Blossom always had that approach as well. Janet, you've just released a new CD and actually you've re released quite a number of CDs over the years and this new one sounds really good. Charade or Charade, whichever way you like to pronounce it, the uh, Henry Mancini songbook. Well, when I say we've just released it, it's our latest CD. It has been out for a while, but we've just been delaying. Um, we've always got plans for a new CD, but having had 17 CDs under my belt, I just thought I just want to rest for a while and just see what direction we're going to go for the next one but Charade is certainly the latest one and it's attracted quite a lot of attention in Australia and in the UK and Japan and Henry Mancini was such a superb songwriter he, he also knew that he wasn't a lyricist you know how everyone these days is a singer songwriter and they all think that they can sing and play and write lyrics and write music equally well Henry Mancini said in his autobiography that he knew that he wasn't a lyricist so he was he went straight to the top he got johnny mercer and all the fabulous lyricists that were at his disposal apparently when he first wrote the music moon river he was neighbors with johnny mercer and johnny came over one night and heard him playing the song and he started johnny started writing lyrics to moon river that went i'm holly Holly is my name. <laughs> and that was the first lyric that Johnny Mercer wrote, and then they switched it to a, you know, this imaginary beautiful place, Moon River. So Mancini is to be admired, um, not only for his musicianship, but his skill in just being there at the right time in the right place, you know. Apparently he was leaving... Um, one of the studios, Hollywood studios, I think he'd just been given the sack and he was leaving and he met someone on the steps. It was Blake Edwards who was writing the Peter Gunn or promoting, uh, producing the Peter Gunn TV series. And he said, to, Blake Edwards said to Henry Mancini, hey, why don't you try and write a theme song? <laughs> so out of that, that was his first big hit, the Peter Gunn theme. So it's it's interesting, isn't it? You can have all the talent in the world, but if you're in the right place at the right time, it can lead to very big things. <laughs> yeah, he was a, he was a wonderful writer. He won four Oscars, and he could have won many, many more. On this CD, Charade, you've got uh, Joe Kindamo on the piano. Oh, the brilliant Joe. Um, we were in Japan when I got an SMS on my phone from Joe saying, I'm on Spicks and Specs. <laughs> And unfortunately, we didn't get to see it, but Joe is one heck of a smart guy. And it was a real pleasure for me to just sing on this album and, and leave the piano playing to someone eminently more qualified than me to play piano. But I've since, you know, I've listened to the the way Joe plays and I'm certainly influenced by, by his playing. He's a tremendous musician and it was a, a real thrill to record with him. Well, Janet, what does the future hold? Are you going to do more touring overseas? I think we're going to be spending uh, a good percentage of next year in the UK again. But my tours in Australia, at the moment, they just keep snowballing. So we're booked in Australia up until the end of June. And then our plan is to spend the rest of the, year, of the year in the UK and then branch out from there because we've already got an established touring circuit in uh, the United Kingdom and Northern Ireland but we want to make a few more inroads to particularly uh, the Netherlands and Belgium, where we've played before. But we, we need to sort of go back and revisit some of these great clubs that we've played in. I've also done a gig in Paris, but, and I'd like to repeat that. So being based in the UK, you can certainly easily get across the, the channel much easier than it is being based in Sydney. So that, that is our plan. Thanks, okay, Janet. great to talk to you. Cheerio. Cheers. That's Janet Seidel appearing at South Tweed Sports with Willie Quar on 11th of July.